YouTube channel. If you have not yet done so, please take a moment to help us with an attendance count by typing your name in the chat box. And I know Robert's mentioned that a few times already as well. One of the purposes of our annual meeting is to elect extension board members. This year we have five nominees. They are Dan Hummel, Jeff Kitson, Regina Morehouse, Kathy Overholt, and Joel Holsopel. Our advisory council members were emailed a page titled, Get to Know Your Nominees. We thank you for making the time to read over our nominees' biographies. Later in the evening, we will have a poll question that will appear on the screen for the advisory council to confirm the nominees to the extension board. We greatly appreciate all of your support of the extension program here in our county. We look forward to working with everyone to support the great work Extension does in the future. And now I'm going to turn it back over to our County Extension Director, Robert Kelly. Thanks, Andy. It's good to see everyone in our little computer squares tonight. Um, definitely not how we originally planned to have this, but you know, it's 2020, so we're working with the best that we can. Um, and so we're glad that you're here joining us. Uh, and I just wanna do some introductions and really thank our extension board members uh, who serve as a sounding board for the educators uh, and help us with promoting programs and um, you know, telling us if we have good ideas or not. Uh, so this year, our president was Andy Gall, uh, our vice president, Jeff Kitson, secretary was John Gardner, uh, as well as board members, Cynthia Adam, Tracy Byler, Joe Guerrero, Dan Hummel, Matt Kritzman, John Lear, Regina Morehouse, Gloria Mosier, Kara Sutton, Clark Warner, Brett Whitehead, and Craig Yoder. We also have two youth who serve on our extension board uh, who are members of our 4-H program and we greatly appreciate their support, uh, Gavin Erb as well as Kara Stacy. So thank you all for serving on the extension board as we know that this takes of, uh, your life and uh, giving back to our community. Also want to introduce uh, our support staff team uh, who are really the frontline workers in our office. Uh, when you call, they're the gals that are answering the phone. They're the ones working the counter um, and they have done a phenomenal job uh, this year with everything. Um, Brandy Cavanaugh serves as our office coordinator. Uh, Nancy Borkholder uh, is our a and secretary and does some of our 4-H work as well. Uh, Penny Conover, who is our newest addition to the office and support staff. Oh, I do this. Um, who started in January 2019. Uh, Jen Fink serves as our HHS educator. And Susan Stein also serves as a 4-H uh, support staff member and receptionist. Uh, we have two people from the Nutrition Education Program uh, who work in our office. Uh, Lindsay Katarina serves as a community wellness coordinator. Some of you have worked with her. Um, and we also have Julie Meyer who serves as a program uh, educator in that area. So I am now gonna turn it back over to Andy Gall. Andy, are you there? Hey, I was doing a really nice job, and then I didn't realize anybody knew, but good thing you said something, Robert. Let me start over. Each year at the Elkhart County Purdue Extension Board annual meeting, five people are elected to serve on the Extension Board. Extension Board members play a valuable role as an advisory committee to the educators. The term on the Extension Board is for three years, a maximum of two consecutive terms is spelled out in the bylaws. Members who can be reelected for a second term are Dan Humble, Jeff Kitson, and Regina Morehouse. Earlier, I introduced the 2021 Extension Board nominees and encouraged you to read their biographies. Those on the ballot are Dan Humble, Jeff Kitson, Regina Morehouse, Kathy Overholt, and Joel Holsopel. 
According to the bylaws, the people who can vote are members of the Extension Advisory Council and members of the Extension Board. If your name appears on this list shown on the screen, you can vote. We will be using the poll feature in Zoom. In a moment, a poll will pop up with the names of the people on the ballot. Please select each one you would like to confirm before submitting your ballot. You can vote for up to five people. The people receiving the most votes will become members of the Elkhart County Extension Board. Robert will activate the poll question. Wait for about a minute or so for the ballots to be submitted. Thank you for everyone for submitting your ballot. We will announce the winners after our program this evening. I'll turn it back over to Robert. Perfect. We'll wait just one more minute for y'all to get those uh, get those in there. All right, thank you to everyone for submitting your poll. So now we are going to dive into our program. Uh, and this year, before I, we kind of kick off, you're gonna hear each educator present uh, a little bit about their program, uh, what they've done over the past year, as well as what they have planned for this upcoming year. Um, and we know this year was different, but I think our numbers still speak volumes to the impact we were able to make in, our, in the Elkhart County community. Um, as you see on your screen are just some stats from this year. Uh, and you'll hear some of the educators talk about this, uh, especially if we went a digital back in March with a lot of our programming. Uh, we launched a YouTube channel uh, that encompasses all four program areas in our office and has nearly 5,000 views since March, which is pretty impressive for a lot of the videos that we have up there, um, ranging from cooking demonstrations, uh, different things with raised beds, um, money management, there's all kinds of really good resources there, um, as well as our 4-H uh, numbers, our Master Gardener volunteer hours, uh, and then even in our office, we still have a lot of people who have come in, called us, um, and the different educational sessions we are able to offer. Uh, just those educational sessions does not include um, a lots of our Zoom meetings as well as um, other things that we had done digitally this year. So that is just in-person reaches. So I think that's pretty impressive and our team has done an outstanding job. And so at this time, it is my pleasure to introduce Jeff Burbrink, who serves as an Ag and Natural Resources Educator in our office, uh, to hear a little bit about his programming and uh, what he's got going on. Jeff? Good evening, everybody. Uh, good to have so many people on the program tonight. And, um, and I'm an anxious to talk to you a little bit about what, we, what I did this uh, last year or so. Uh, like like uh, everybody has been saying, uh, this last year has been a crazy year. Um, in 2019 through 2020, a uh, big part of my program is working with the commercial um, horticulture industry. Uh, we held a, a vegetable growers meeting, had about 80 people in attendance. It was one of the biggest vegetable growers meetings in the state of Indiana. Just about exceeded the, um, the one that they hold in Indianapolis every year. So um, the program for the commercial turf applicators uh, attracted 24 folks um, from mostly from our county and also from St. Joe County. And we had a consumer hort program. Uh, I was the state chairperson or co-chair for the a virtual master gardener class that we launched back in August. And we had 500 people on the nose enroll in that program. In fact, they're, they're having their program right now as we speak for on Tuesday evenings. Uh, the master gardener uh, group that, that I work with very closely hosted a, a garden expo event up at uh, what we used to call the RV Hall of Fame back in February, just before the coronavirus broke. And we had 850 people show up for that event. 
it was uh, that was the second year we've had it. We were up from 500 people uh, last the year before. So pretty amazing there. Um, and Robert, if you could advance the slide there for field crops last year, uh, most of our efforts for field crops usually go with weed control, disease management, um, pesticide drift management, and fungicide use. And um, I held six six in-person meetings before COVID hit and had pretty good attendance with those this year. And the big highlight of the year was supposed to be a tar spot meeting that was supposed to take place face to face right towards the end of March. And unfortunately, that's when COVID shut everything down. So we moved it online uh, within about a week's time, we were able to get moved on the line. And we had about 26 people initially show up for that program online and another 100 people viewed it um, throughout the, the summer when we got close to the time when uh, tar spot begins to hit. Uh, also hosted an unmanned aerial, aerial vehicle or a drone training uh, here in the county. We had about 25 people participate in that. And, um, and for the last two years in September and October, had quite a bit of time uh, coordinating efforts to find beekeepers and organic growers in the, um, in the county uh, to let them have warning about being sprayed uh, um, for the mosquitoes that cause Tripoli e or Eastern equine encephalitis. Um, in fact, as, as a matter of fact, that effort is still ongoing um, I had several um, several hours worth of time tied in it, tied up with that subject again, just this week, uh, trying to clean up some efforts with some bee damage that was done. So, uh, Robert, if you move to the next slide. Ah, okay. Uh, this year, 2020 through 21, uh, the plans are to have a commercial vegetable growers meeting. Uh, we'll probably do that in cooperation with the Wakarusa Produce Auction. Uh, we do plan to have another tree and shrub applicators meeting for their training. Uh, those folks, uh, if you aren't aware, they're commercial applicators, so they need to get a certain number of training hours each year in order to keep their licenses up to date. And I'm sincerely hoping that we have an area meeting on tree fruit growing this spring. Uh, we were all set to have one uh, this year, and then, of course, COVID came along, and we couldn't do that. If not, we'll have to find some other way to get that information out. Uh, for consumer horticulture, um, we do currently, in that group of 500 people that are taking the Master Gardener class statewide, we have 15 new Master Gardeners being trained here locally. And so I need to integrate those folks in with the group, and uh, part of that will be working with them uh, the next couple of months, uh, introducing them to what the Master Gardener Association is and that sort of thing. So next month, we're actually going to have a Zoom meeting to introduce them to our local Master Gardeners. Um, we have uh, quite a few of our Master Gardeners are, are at that delicate age where COVID becomes uh, a bit concerning. So we have some challenges working with those folks keeping them active, giving them things to do and that sort of thing. So last night, for instance, we had some training with them, um, a quiz show, and they could uh, answer the, the, some questions and win prizes worth, uh, you know, hundreds of pennies. So it was, it was quite a good deal. Um, we had about 35 people participate in that last evening. And um, it's part of the other consumer horticulture thing. I've been getting a lot of questions, usually in the month of uh, August or September, from homeowners whose lawns are going bad. And a lot of that has to do with how they're fertilizing and how they're watering their lawns in the months previous. And so um, I came up with an idea to put together a virtual series for homeowners. Um, and I've got several other educators that are going to work with me on that series. So we're going to try to do a uh, probably a four or five part series for homeowners that have lawns uh, that they can subscribe to and then um, be, participate in uh, learning about how to take care of their lawns. For field crops, our focus will uh, primarily be weed control this year with a little bit of disease management and pesticide drift management thrown in. 
and probably um, a little bit more about fungicide use in this next year. So um, fungicides are relatively new to the crops industry and, and um, there's still a lot of people trying to learn how to best effectively use them. So that's it for my report. Um, I now have the privilege to introduce Virginia Aparicio. Uh, she's, um, she's been with us now for a little bit over a year, uh, about it, maybe a year and a half. And it was my pleasure to uh, get to know her. She was in the office right ne next door to me for quite some time. And I've really enjoyed her company as she uh, learns her ropes in the Purdue Extension profession. So Virginia, it's all yours. Thank you so much, Jeff. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Virginia Aparicio, Educator for Health and Human Sciences. Thank you all for being here with us tonight. I'm going to go over just a few of the highlights of the past year. This summer, I did complete my first year with Extension, and I had a fantastic year. I got to meet many educators and leaders within Purdue, and I got to connect with many people in Elkhart County. And although the first year I did focus a lot on learning and professional development, I did get the opportunity to fit programming in, and those are the highlights I'm going to share today. So Health and Human Sciences has four areas uh, that we provide programming in, which are health and wellness, human development, family resource management, and foods and nutrition. Health and wellness is the area that I have chosen as a specialty. It's the area that I feel the most passionate about and it connects well with the other areas. I joined a team to help deliver uh, the Protecting Our Youth and Hidden in Plain Sight program uh, in Spanish in a neighboring county. And this program uses data from the Indiana Youth Survey to deliver evidence-based information to parents, families, caregivers, and um, other concerned community members regarding risky behavior that youth are engaging in. In addition, it includes a discussion about local risks and protective factors and guides parents on how to talk with teens about decisions that could lead to risky um, behavior. Through the help of a grant from Beacon Health, we had planned to deliver the program to various counties, including Elkhart. However, due to COVID, we postponed that plan and continue to develop uh, the program. And we're actually invited uh, this year to present the program on a national level as a concurrent session at the uh, National Extension Association of Family and Consumer Sciences. So there's been a lot of interest in the program. So our next step is hosting a train the trainer session. So more extension educators and community leaders can offer the program. This year, we welcomed uh, Lindsay Katerina, our community wellness coordinator, who is part of Purdue's nutrition education program. She's featured in this first photo. So she has been great in connecting people uh, with resources and agencies uh, with each other, including myself and the community. Um, for example, I offered the Get Walk-In program in the spring, which is an email-based walking program that provides motivation and support to get people to increase their level of physical activity through walking. And with the help of Lindsay, we were able to shine some light on the local parks and the Elkhart County Parks also helped us promote this program to the community. In response to COVID, I, along with other educators in our district for the spring and summer, uh, came together to provide a series of virtual programs related to health and wellness on a weekly basis for the time that we were unable to um, provide face-to-face -face programming. I also connected with libraries in the county. Of all the programs I've done at the libraries, I would have to say that block party was the most fun. I mean, you walk into the room and there's blocks everywhere. It's chaos, there's kids, but the kids really um, seem to love it and the parents seem to enjoy uh, learning how their children can develop math, social, early engineering, uh, physical and creativity skills. Uh, just to name a few through block play. Uh, this year has been a struggle in many ways and for many families, it's been a financial struggle. So another great partnership has been working with uh, Northern Indiana Work One and Melissa Gard, who is with us today, uh, to provide financial related programs on how to recover from a financial setback uh, by navigating local resources, managing debt, tracking expenses, 
um, while also finding ways to save money um, and also identifying and avoiding scams. So this is to offer families financial tools and lead them to resources uh, during these challenging times. We started this in the summer and we plan to continue and expand this series. Uh, Robert, if you could go to the next slide. I had the opportunity of working alongside Marianne Leanhart Cross to provide the Dining with Diabetes program. Diabetes is one of the top health disparities in Indiana and was identified as a focal point in recent community health assessments um, done by both uh, local hospitals here in Elkhart County. It's also a topic that I'm very familiar with and passionate about. So being able to offer this program to the community and also learn from Marianne and her expertise uh, in the nutrition component of the program was a personal highlight for me. And then these food picks on here in the corner um, are from Cooking Around the World, which was an on the fly thought in my head that happened like at 1 a.m. and turned out to be a four week uh, live video series uh, where each week I just focused on uh, culture in relation to food and hosted a live demo where people could tune in and ask questions. Um, I explained uh, why certain foods were used and how they were prepared and where to find these items locally, as well as the nutritional benefits. Um, cactus salad was one of the dishes that I prepared and this video, if you wanna play the video, Ravi. <laughs> Good, okay, cool. Um, is just uh, where I went to uh, a Latin grocery store that was down the street around the corner. Um, and we got to see the grocer just taking the spines out of the cactus so customers don't have to do it themselves. Um, so just being able to share that cultural experience um, with others was really, really cool. And I remember a viewer saying, you know, normally she wouldn't have a reason to go to that type of store, but that now she was curious and she was gonna go get cactus and see what other items um, they sold. So that's really what the whole series was about. And then next slide, Robert. My goals for 2020, 2021, are focused on developing um, a health and human sciences advisory board so I can get input from local community leaders to provide programming that really targets the highest priority needs uh, in the county. Um, and with that, I wanna continue to expand current health and human sciences programming to provide more options for the community as well as to reach a broader audience of people than we have in the past and continue to promote the Protecting Our Youth Hidden in Plain Sight program. So it's offered in Elkhart County, as well as around the state. Uh, and finally, a special, special thanks to Jennifer Fink, my secretary, because without her, none of this would be possible. So thank you all. And I am happy to introduce to you Steele Graybar. All right. Howdy, everybody. Um, I'm the, one of the full-time 4-H educators here in Elkhart. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to start with uh, a couple highlights from 2019 and 2020. I have them sorted there by uh, kind of the goals that I have for myself each year. And kind of just going to touch briefly on a lot of those. If you can, though, you can blow up the pictures a bit, you're going to want to see a couple of those because the, the one in the bottom right is actually really fascinating. But I'll get into that in a second. So um, for my first goal, civic engagement, one of the things that I uh, was able to do this year that I was super excited about, um, and it's more of a professional development piece, I guess, but it's also civic engagement, is I was chair of the National Youth Empowerment Working Group. Um, what a year to be chair, right? I mean, it was it was different, but uh, we we were able to accomplish a lot of great things, and it was a, a step outside my comfort zone as far as getting involved nationally, and I was glad to do it. Um, another piece for the civic engagement uh, goal that I had was a state house trip, and that's what the picture in the top right is. Um, Elkhart County partnered with St. Joe County and Marshall County, and we transported uh, about 20 youth. Uh, to the state house in February. And uh, these youth had an opportunity to be pages for the day. Uh, we also had a tour of the state house. Uh, they got to meet legislators. 
Um, it was a long day, but it was a good day. And uh, actually something that's really cool that's come out of it is the state civic engagement team is looking at adopting what we did, the model that we had uh, for a statewide program that's gonna be similar um, for 4-H just across the state of Indiana. So uh, it's cool to be at the forefront for that. Uh, then lastly, there for civic, civic engagement, um, YouTube officers training. I, we've typically had an officers training for youth in person. And uh, this year I wanted to make the move to YouTube and that was before we had to do things on YouTube. Um, but I'm really glad we did. I uh, had some older 4-H'ers. Uh, they, they did the research on their own. They came into the office and we filmed them uh, teaching the, the president, the vice president, the secretary, the treasurer roles. Um, and I had some positive feedback from club leaders about it too, because their kids could watch those videos on their time multiple times um, whenever they needed to, to learn the content that they needed. So. Um, that's been a success, and I, I think we're going to build on that this next year with some of the chairs that those clubs need as well. Um, moving into STEM, um, had a couple 4-Hers approach me, actually, uh, about a connection they had at Ethos in Elkhart, and uh, they had already worked with the coach, that uh, the robotics coach in Mishawaka or Granger area, I believe, and he had been hired at Ethos. And uh, things got kind of, that got the ball rolling. And I know that there was kids meeting at Ethos that were doing robotics as a 4-H club, and they were gonna compete in a contest in May. Um, we'll hope to do that again this year uh, and, and hope that we're able to do it in May. Uh, but uh, that was exciting. And then I had virtual exhibition there. I think Robert's gonna talk about what happened in July uh, more in full. So I'm gonna leave that for him but obviously there was a lot of technology involved with what we did there. Uh, for healthy living, uh, moved the performing arts contest that we traditionally have in April, uh, late April, early May, moved that to a virtual format uh, using Google Drive basically. So youth were able to submit videos of them doing uh, musical acts or non-musical acts or public speaking or demonstrations. Um, and then those were judged by a judge um, had more participants this year than I've ever had. Uh, I think maybe due to the flexibility of being able to do the video when they, whenever they were available. And then uh, again, the judge also liked the flexibility of being able to judge those videos because they could watch it over and over again, but had over 40 participants, um, I think like 41 or 42 uh, this year, which is a record for me, which was exciting. Um, as far as outreach from this past year, uh, formed what I call the Elkhart Task Force. It's a subcommittee of expansion review, um, but it's, it's focused just in trying to get 4-H uh, programs rolling in the city of Elkhart. Um, have three or four individuals this past year, I'm up to about five or six now, that are meeting at Mary Beck. Well, we just met on Zoom this, I guess, last week or two weeks ago. Um, but we would be meeting at Mary Beck. Um, and that's been great. They've uh, they helped kind of jumpstart a contraption club, a Rube, Rube Goldberg experiment um, at Mary Beck and Hawthorne. And there was also interest, or there's interest at Monger as well, and I think even Roosevelt. So that whole area, we're trying to get some 4-H programming going, and that's been led largely by the Elkhart Task Force. So that's been exciting. And then the last thing there is uh, International Program Peru. That's what the bottom right picture is. That's actually a dairy farm in the Andes that I was, uh, during winter break, I had the opportunity to uh, work with Purdue students. Uh, I was going to their classes in the fall and then it culminated in a trip to Peru in the winter. And one of the things that we were able to do was we went out to the Andes and uh, just it was really, it was very much a needs assessment. Um, my role there was to help the Purdue students learn uh, extension engagement methods, how extension educators go out and try to help the community um, and really apply what they've learned in classes uh, to the real world. So um, not only did we do that in the Andes, but then we also spent about a week in the Amazon too, uh, working with ecotourism uh, industry there. So that was really cool. Um, Loved it and would love to do it again, maybe sometime. But Robert, you can go to the next page. There you go, goals for 2020. Cool, all right, so 
first one there, election poll workers, you know that's probably happening right now. Um, yes, I had about five youth contact me uh, for something called the Hoosier Hall Pass program. It's actually a program in the state of Indiana where youth that are 16 and 17 can work on election day as poll workers. Um, all I can do for those youth is connect them to the clerk's office, but um, I definitely did, I, I talked to several youth that were interested and I'm looking forward to following up with them to see if, if they actually did uh, work here in the next, I guess it's next week, um, election day. So, so that's exciting. That's about wrapped up at this point. Um, a career readiness seminar, uh, that's something Robert, Anna and I are gonna work on where it used to be the 4-H scholarship workshop, but we're actually turning it into a college and career readiness, uh, like triple workshop. So there'll be scholarships still, that'll be one component. There's gonna be a resume writing component. And then there's also going to be uh, like a financial, uh, practical finances for like an 18, 19 year old, uh, what they need to know component as well. Uh, moving into some of those other things, I'm just gonna go quick because I know my five minutes are about up, but uh, esports team, potentially starting an esports team this year, that's a goal. Uh, I've had interest in Elkhart actually about doing something with that. Uh, I have some 4-Hers that are interested in that. Um, drones program, uh, I want to do something at the Elkhart Airport with that. Um, a virtual 5K, I'm already kind of, I've got the ball rolling on that as well. We'll have bibs, medals, t-shirts. Um, we're going to use the technology for that quite a bit too. Uh, bookstore basketball, if you're familiar with Notre Dame, they have a bookstore basketball tournament. I wanted to kind of do something smaller scale here in Elkhart uh, somewhere. We'll see how that goes. And then uh, I'm just going to talk about the Barbecue Cooking Spark Club too. That was That's another thing that the Elkhart Task Force is working on. The dream is to have like a partner up with Bacon Hill and Elkhart, let youth learn how to use a grill and, and actually barbecue like pork and chicken and vegetables and then actually have a cook-off event at like Roosevelt Park or even Nibco Park in Elkhart uh, one weekend. So those are just some things that I'm excited about that are goals of mine for this year. Uh, with that, uh, I will introduce the next speaker. Uh, it's Anna Bayless. She's been with us for like a month, but I'm excited to have her and she's doing great. So Anna, take it away. Thanks, Steele. Um, yeah, I've started with Purdue Extension on August 31st this year. Robbie, you can go to the next slide. Um, and I grew up in Metro Detroit, then moved to North Carolina to attend Duke University um, and studied environmental science and Spanish, but particularly focused on education there. And then spent the last year serving with AmeriCorps as a service member in a program called Food Corps. And so in that year, I was working in an elementary school teaching um, classes during the day and then after school and working a lot on issues of food security, nutrition and garden education with the students there. And I loved my time with that. Um, I also served as a youth director last year at my church part-time. Um, and now I'm here in Elkhart County. Um, I'm excited to work with the 4-Hers and the volunteers in Elkhart County. Um, Robert, you can move to the next one, thanks. And um, my three goals, they assign new educators um, the same three goals for their first six months. And so um, I'm working on relationship building, trying to meet all of you um, and also meet some of the community that we haven't reached yet in our 4-H program. So trying to reach out um, and I would be happy to hear from some of you. My contact information is on our website. Um, so please reach out. I'm happy to hear from you. Um, the second goal is needs assessment, learning about community needs and how 4-H can address youth and empowerment in Elkhart County. And then the last goal that they've assigned um, new educators is organizational leadership and professional development. So last week I actually attended the 4-H um, professionals conference for the national conference. Um, and I'm continuing to learn more. I'm in a course at Purdue for new educators, learning all about extension um, and trying to get to know other educators around the state and in other counties. I'm eager to meet you all and hear from you. So I look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully soon. 
And with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Robbie Kelly. Thanks, Anna. So up next is myself, uh, Robert Kelly. Andy, Andy introduced me earlier. Um, kind of wear three different hats in the office if you've been around for a while. Um, I serve as our county extension director, um, as well as have a, a little bit of appointment in our ag side of our office, as well as 4-H youth development. Uh, kind of really focus on the livestock end of our programming, as well as STEM uh, and, and working with our entire team. <laughs> so the, this past year, um, in 2019 to 2020, um, I have three big goals. Uh, it was, first one is all STEM related. Uh, this year, I was able to work with a volunteer, uh, which we went into the Napanee Elementary School, who has a STEM class, and we were able to offer lots of different hands-on programming uh, for third, fourth, and fifth graders. Uh, had really, really good attendance with that, um, but cut that two classes short because of the school session, as we know, uh, but had some new, that was a also a school that we had uh, low and 4-H enrollment in, um, so to help engage some new people who maybe have not been exposed to 4-H before. Spent a lot of time of volunteer development in the STEM area. Uh, and one of those, uh, I, I do a lot of volunteer development with our livestock leaders. Uh, we meet throughout the year uh, and do different trainings on hands-on activities they can teach in uh, their, their club meetings. Uh, some of them even did a few YouTube videos um, to keep their kids engaged uh, throughout this spring. Uh, so really good resources that kids were able to take advantage of learning everything from nutrition to biosecurity. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, Steele and I partnered uh, as we knew we were having to go virtual with a lot of the programs and we started what we call the Learning from Home series, uh, which is on our YouTube page. Uh, it's really short, uh, between five and 10 minute long videos uh, that kids can use uh, to do science experiments. Creative writing is one that Steele had done. Uh, lots of really cool activities that club leaders can eventually use as a resource library uh, for the upcoming years. Um, and one of those was actually featured on the National 4-H page. Uh, so we're pretty excited about that. One of the other things we really focus on is civic engagement uh, in the 4-H world. And that was our Junior Livestock Advisory Board this past year. Uh, we had 25 kids uh, who were in ninth through 12th grade that participate in that. Uh, that group really serves as a sounding board for me. Um, as we know, it is 4-H is a youth-driven program and we need their input. Um, they do a lot of planning. They have taught uh, lessons at 4-H club meetings when they were able to. Um, and so this upcoming year, we're really excited to get them off the ground again. Uh, and the ag side of my role, uh, we always get random phone calls uh, asking, uh, Jeff gets a lot more of them than I do, but uh, giving advice to local producers to help them make uh, good um, decisions. Uh, this year I offered the Livestock 101 Signature Series. Uh, it is a program that teaches, um, it's really a beginner's guide to how to raise livestock and poultry. Uh, we focused on sheep and goats, horses, cattle, uh, poultry, and beef as well. Uh, we reached over 50 people uh, here in the Northern Indiana area that participated in that. Um, and because that was online, we were actually able to take some of those resources and we had a participant from California. Um, so not are we only meeting these local needs, but we're also taking them out broader, which is, I think is the great thing about the extension system that we're able to do that. Um, but we did have some people here locally who told me they've actually used some of that advice. Um, to do some pastures and things, which is really cool. We also uh, published some videos. Uh, I did one on raised bed gardening um, that Jeff helped me out with. As most of, some of you may know, I don't have the world's greatest greenest thumb, um, but I actually built some raised beds here at my house uh, that I use, and I did some uh, tips on uh, livestock care as well that people have watched. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, all those videos, you know, have a huge amount of views in the short amount of time they've been up. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is our farm stress uh, programs that we've offered over the last year. Uh, I serve as a member as the farm stress team uh, from Purdue Extension. Um, and we have offered uh, several virtual programs. 
a couple of years ago, we also offered this program in person in Elkhart County. Um, we know mental health is a huge challenge for farmers and it's a subject that a lot of people don't wanna talk about. And so bringing uh, tips and things to people who work with farmers, uh, whether it's lenders, whether it's equipment dealers, or even the farmers themselves of ways to think about stress, um, how can they relieve stress, and also uh, what are the signs to, to get help. Uh, and that's really, really important uh, for our farming community. Next year, uh, we got some exciting plans that are already in the works. Uh, one of the first things that I am, uh, you'll be thinking, what in the world is Clover Gaming and what does board games have anything to do with 4-H? Um, a couple of years ago, uh, the state of Indiana launched what we call the Clover Gaming Connection. Uh, we are excited to announce that uh, Elkhart County will be one of the test pilots for that in phase two. Uh, I have a couple of volunteers who are geared up and ready to go. And so what the Clover Gaming Connection does is it teaches kids a lot of STEM, a lot of uh, math and science uh, behind the board games and how to design board games while having fun and interacting with each other. Uh, so that's something we're gonna be launching this year. Um, so we're super excited about that. We'll be offering uh, the Youth for Quality Care of Animals class uh, that all of our livestock exhibitors will be able to participate in. Uh, this class really focuses on <clears throat> being a part of the food chain. Uh, as we know, all those animals, uh, not all of them, but most of the animals that go through our auction as well as that the kids, 4-Hers are raising, uh, possibly will end up in the food chain. So teaching them how they're a part of the food chain, how to care for those animals properly, um, and, and animal handling as well. Again, we'll be focusing on some volunteer development um, and, and you know, equipping our volunteers uh, to be able to work with our youth in our county. Uh, civic engagement is another big component of my uh, programming. Uh, this year, we're really gonna take a focus on youth adult partnerships. Uh, and what that really does, uh, and this is mostly going to be geared towards our older youth uh, from grades 8 through 12, <laughs> and getting them more involved in leadership positions in our county, um, not just in the 4-H program, but throughout the, you know, other boards and things that they can serve on, as well as the junior livestock program, uh, and expanding that. On the ANR side, uh, I'll be focusing on uh, farm stress programs and mental health for farmers. Uh, as well as the Nature of Teaching program. Uh, this is a really cool program that Purdue has put together that I'll be bringing to our county. It connects people um, with nature. Uh, Steele and I were kind of talking earlier about a national conference uh, session he attended um, that you know called it the nature deficit and getting people connected back to nature and how does that relate to um, ag and natural resources, as well as um, continuing to build our animal husbandry series uh, doing a pilot of, of doing that virtual as well as in person to help us reach more people. Nature deficit disorder. Thanks, Steele. So we're super excited about that. Uh, those are the two, the three big areas that I'm focusing on this year. And so I'm going to turn it back to Andy, who can announce our election results. And I will do that here in a minute, Robbie. I'm gonna go off script just for a little bit. And I'm going to invite everyone to open up your mics. You don't need to talk. Hopefully you don't have a bunch of background noise because we're getting to the part of the program now where we need to applaud. So I hope everybody has your mics open right now because I think right now would be a great time to thank Robbie and his staff for the work that they've done. And if we were in a normal meeting, we would do that right now. So let's give them a nice round of applause. <laughs> kind of hard to do that, I realize. But uh, if we were in a real meeting, that's exactly what we would do. So I just wanted to make sure we do that. Our election results, this is no surprise to anyone here, I'm sure. The results of the Extension Board election are as follows. Elected to a second term in office were Dan Hummel, Jeff Kitson, and Regina Morehouse. Elected for the first term in office is Kathleen Overholt and Joel Holsopel. So we say a special welcome to Kathleen and Joel, and we thank Dan, Jeff, and Regina for putting their names back in for a second term. 
and we look forward to working on with all five of you here in the next year. <laughs> we will have an organizational meeting on November 16th, and you'll get information on that here real soon. We do have some retiring members this year. Each year we recognize retiring board members to thank them for their years of service and dedication to Purdue Extension. This year completing two three-year terms, we thank Tracy Byler and John Lear. And for Tracy and John, we have plaques for each of you at the Extension office. With that, I'll turn it back over to Robert. Thank you, Andy. And thank you, Tracy and John, for all of your years of service to Purdue Extension. We greatly appreciate it. And we know this year was definitely extra meetings that uh, none of us have planned on, and your advice has been uh, second to none. Each year, we have the pleasure to introduce our friend of Extension. Um, so this is something that the educators and the Extension staff go through and vote on. Um, and <laughs> I just want to do a little, little read of our Friend of Extension this year. The Friend of Extension Award is handed out each year to an individual or business that goes above and beyond to enhance Purdue Extension's mission and vision. This year's recipient is a Friend of, a friend of Extension does just that. This person has served in numerous roles supporting our 4-H program in Purdue Extension, including serving on the 4-H Fair Board, volunteering as a 4-H club member, club leader, and as a member of our 4-H corporation. You often see this person sporting green at events and shouting from the rooftops, get your youth involved in 4-H. This friend has many attributes that make up the word friend. They include <clears throat> fabulous, responsible, impactful, energetic, notorious, and determined. By now, some of you may have an indication of who this person might be. She has been a great asset to Purdue Extension programming by using her marketing skills to get the word out, serves as a sounding board for some crazy ideas. She isn't afraid to get her hands dirty, take temperatures, assist with trash, or even start an after school club for our 4 uh, Hers. This person even helped revitalize the Parade of Champions. It is my pleasure to introduce our 2020 Friend of Extension, Jill Garris. So everyone can open their mics up and clap because that's what we would do. Yay, Jill. <laughs> so we are super excited for Jill. Um, and just thank you again for your dedication to Purdue Extension. Uh, and everything you've done for us, as well as our 4 Hers. So, I just wanna close with a few remarks for uh, everyone. Again, I just wanna say 2020 has been a year of change and adaptation. Tonight is just one of those examples of how we are innovating and reaching out in new ways. Our staff and volunteers are resilient and adapt to meet the needs of our ever-changing community. And it's because of the support that we're offered by you all. On behalf of the Extension Board and staff, I just wanna thank each of you for joining us tonight and celebrating our accomplishments. And we wish that you are safe and happy and we look forward to hopefully seeing you all in person soon. So thank you again for joining us tonight and we'll have this recording for later. Uh, so if you wanna go back and watch it. Thank you all.